This is a Best in Climate episode of Earth Feels, where each week your hosts Rose and Christine read to you from some of the best climate-related blogs and articles on the web. Hi there, it's Rose again with this week's Best in Climate. This week's article is from the New York Times, and it's part of a series on resilience in troubled times, what we can learn about it from history and from our personal experiences. And it's written by Eileen Zimmerman. It's entitled, Out of the Pandemic, Chances for Another Future. About a year ago, just as the pandemic was hitting New York City, Sinjin Frizzell and his two partners were readying for the grand opening of Gage and Tolner, a newly renovated 140-year-old restaurant in downtown Brooklyn. One day before the March 15th opening, for which the three partners had spent almost a year and a half preparing, they made the difficult decision not to open. Frizzell retreated to his home in Brooklyn. The only sounds on the street were ice cream trucks and ambulances, he recalled. Anxious about going to the supermarket, but needing groceries for himself and his son, he reached out to one of his vendors, Lancaster Farm Fresh Co-op to see about having some food delivered. Lancaster was delivering boxes of seasonal produce, but needed an order large enough to be worth the trip. So Frizzell, who suddenly had downtime, did something he had not done in a while. He reached out to his neighbors. I posted something about it in a local Red Hook group on Facebook and got a big response, he said. I thought, okay, I can set this up for all of us. Frizzell also owns Fort Defiance, a beloved Red Hook bar that he opened in 2009 and that also closed in March of 2020. It became the order pickup spot. Neighbors began asking about other grocery items, so Frizzell added things like milk, eggs, cheese, and meats. A lot of people in the neighborhood began looking to us for their staples, he said. By midsummer, Fort Defiance had permanently become a general store, with new signage painted over the old cafe and bar. This March, Frizzell started a crowdfunding campaign to help the store move to a bigger space one block away. Gage and Tolner, which has been open for takeout since mid-February, plans to open for indoor dining April 15th. The whole experience made Frizzell aware of how much richer his life is when he is connected to the community. Reaching out and asking what people needed felt really good, like I was doing what I could to help, he said. It felt very purposeful. When life is disrupted by crisis, as it has been in this past year, some people see opportunities for change, action, introspection. They might not otherwise. The pandemic has caused many to question the way they live and what is important to them. That is because a crisis often helps us to develop a wider perspective on our lives, said Amit Sud, a physician and executive director of the Global Center for Resiliency and Well-Being in Rochester, Minnesota. And that allows us to reframe what we see. Of course, for many people struggling to make ends meet or lacking savings, a big life change or even just a shift in perspective may not be possible. But for those fortunate enough to have the psychological space and economic security, this kind of reframing can present real possibilities for change. When people focus on what is right within what seems wrong in their life, for example, the car has a flat tire but isn't totaled, that can lead to seeing things that present themselves as opportunities, he said. This is not the same thing as positive thinking. Instead, said Rick Hansen, a clinical psychologist and author of Resilient, How to Grow an Unshakable Core of Calm, Strength, and Happiness, it is about seeing openings in life for change and transformation, even in difficult circumstances. Hansen said, that although we often think of opportunities as things that exist outside ourselves, like a new job or moving to a different city, 
Opportunities for growth and change exist inside us too. Justin E.H. Smith, for example, a philosopher, historian, and professor at the University of Paris, made subtle but important changes this past year. Smith describes himself as an introvert with a tendency to lead a rigid life, doing the same things in the same way every day. The pandemic forced him to restructure his daily life and soften his rigidity. I'm aware of the contingency of these new routines now, he said, and my power to restructure them if they don't suit. Smith, 48, also admitted that he used to feel too old to try anything new. But the pandemic gave the professor permission to be a novice again. It didn't feel shameful any longer for me to be a beginner. So after some research, he opened an online brokerage account. He also took up guitar and now plays every day. And in August, decided to start a paid subscription newsletter on the digital publishing platform Substack, where he writes about the philosophical dimensions of culture, science, and politics, and the ways they are changed and distorted by technology. Absent the pandemic, Smith probably never would have considered it. But for the first time in his professional life, he thought about diversifying his income. I'm thinking ahead in a precarious moment, he said. Those sorts of moments often shake up all that we believe to be true about the world. And that is what leads to personal growth. These are core beliefs we have about the world that we generally do not question, such as how vulnerable or safe we are, how much control we have over things, or what our identity is, said Richard Tedeschi who, along with fellow psychologist Lawrence Calhoun, coined the term post-traumatic growth in the 1990s, naming this phenomenon. We use these assumptions about the world to make decisions every day and to plan for the future. When a crisis hits, we often have trouble believing and accepting what is happening because it disrupts those core beliefs. This is what qualifies as trauma, Tadeshi said and it can set in motion major changes in people's lives. In fact, one of the five areas where growth and change occur after a crisis is in recognizing new possibilities. This is what happened to Elaine Mazinak. In mid-2019, she was a co-owner of a public relations agency in Washington and the mother of a two-year-old when her husband died suddenly. As someone not used to asking for help, she was forced into a position of vulnerability. I allowed myself to be cared for in a way that I hadn't before, Mazinak said. I had so much support. It wasn't comfortable for me, but it was what enabled me to find my footing after the loss. Just as she was getting back into a normal routine, the pandemic descended. For the first few weeks, I felt similar to when I lost my husband. Like the rug got pulled out from under me, she said. In the weeks that followed, she became more reflective, appreciating the positives in her life, especially the security and the support she has, and that so many others do not. I think sometimes when we're super busy, we don't get a chance to zoom out and see the bigger picture, Mazinak said. I realized that what had felt the most meaningful for me in the last two years was having the support of others to help me through a terrible loss, to help me process it. Mazinek decided she wanted to be a person who supports others growing through difficult times. So she started looking into graduate programs in social work. Most deadlines for applying had already passed. So when she learned that the University of Maryland School of Social Work, her first choice, had extended its deadline because of the pandemic, She took it as a sign she was on the right path. Now in her second semester of the program and doing her field work in an elementary school, Mazinek said she feels that the work has real purpose and is closely aligned with her values. The loss I experienced, that tragedy, really changed me, she said, and then the pandemic gave me an opening. It came together in a way I couldn't have predicted 
but now I know where I'm supposed to be. So there you have it. That powerful essay was penned by Eileen Zimmerman, who is also the author of the memoir, Smacked, a story of white-collar ambition, addiction, and tragedy. The New York Times is running a series on resiliency. And I think perhaps one of the lessons we're meant to learn from this pandemic, and I think that perhaps one of the lessons we're meant to learn from this past year is how to be resilient. How do we react when things aren't going the way we planned, right? One of my best friends says, it's about plan B. And I think that's true. How do you shift from what your expectation of what life was supposed to look like to what it actually is? Can you find happiness there? The impending climate crisis is changing everything. The things that we thought were true, we're finding that they really aren't. It's changing our priorities. It's changing what normal looks like. Can we see the gifts? Can we see that climate crisis might be happening for us instead of just to us? That gives me hope. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. That's this week's episode of Best in Climate for Earth Feels. Special thanks to singer-songwriter Kristen Hoffman for generously allowing us to use song for the ocean. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Children of the earth, I'm calling out. There's a mission for you and for me. You see.